What is good? We're back. I got no tripod, but I do have a special guest for you. I got our man, Angelo, one of our favorites. It's been a minute. Angelo, how you doing? Tell them where they can find you. Give give us a plug and, and let us know where you've been and what you've been doing. Sure, man. I, I'm currently freezing my butt off in a in, in nice sunny Chicago. Um, so I'm enjoying the, the negative 10 degree weather. But um, but thanks again for having me on, man. Pretty easy to find on Twitter at Angelo underscore fantasy and uh, on my website currently starting the, the production process for the 2023 uh, prospects at um, AngeloAnalysis.com. So I'm really excited for that type of stuff, man. It's it's draft season, so we have the Senior Bowl today, and looking forward to kind of kicking that off and getting rolling with the combine and all the pro days and all the fun stuff. Yeah, we'll uh, starting to just put some more pieces together here. We've been kind of into the wide receivers. We're going to talk some running backs with you. I mean, if you're not already messing with Angelo, you're already you're already messing up. So hopefully, you're already you don't even need the intro. You shouldn't need it. You're 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 one of my favorites out there to. Uh, kind of telestrate how people move around the ecosystem you kind of got it all you're you're a, we call you the maestro of movement um one of our one of our favorites to talk to so let's jump right into it the 23 classes was much to do as this great god class um and now we're in the draft cycle and it's back to you know well the 24 class is great which seems to happen every single year um but we're right. already there um so let's do do you think this class is is living up to the hype or are we is there a little bit to be desired from the running back position it's funny because i I think it's a it's a yes and no question uh it's yes and no because i think robinson and gibbs would be rb the first running back drafted let's say in in most class over the past you know five years or so right these are both high end high end talents have diverse skill sets and are going to you know be plug and play in the NFL offense and be contributors immediately. After that, that's where it gets interesting, right? You have Charbonnet, you have Tucker. And then after that, I don't know who's going to be drafted in day two, right? You have guys like Spears and McIntosh, and Roshan Johnson. And then you have your a chains, your Zach Evans, your Tank Bigsby's, right? Miller. Yeah, you have Kendra Miller who makes a case too, right? You have kind of this hodgepodge of dudes who we just don't know how the NFL feels about them. The NFL is going to look for high-end physical traits, right? The combine is really important for talent evaluation in the NFL. They're trying to cross the, they're trying to cross off names at that point. That's what it's really for. Um We've already seen the confirmed, you know, 22 miles an hour with, with Jameer Gibbs. And we've seen, you know, Bajan, Bajan Robinson can run four five five in the 40 and doesn't matter. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? It, it, no, who cares? Right. Jameer Gibbs can run four four four, and it's like, all right, whatever. Who, who gives a shit? This is a guy who's ran 22 miles an hour on the field of play. We don't care. We've seen that verified. And then we have guys like Deuce Vaughn, who right. from an analytics standpoint is literally the best running back in his whole cycle. What he did at, K State at 5'6, 170 whatever pounds is remarkable. But he, is he a guy who gets drafted on day two? Right? He's <laughs> right. someone who can, he's ran over 21 and a half miles an hour, right? This is a guy that can run in the four fours. I don't know. So that's the really interesting thing is could this class be 2017? The answer is yes. Right. Right. We have the high end guys in 2017, I believe it was, correct me if I'm wrong, Fournette and McCaffrey. Mm hmm. I believe then, so. Then Cook. we, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. Kamara. Uh, Kamara. Yep. We, um, had, we had another hodgepodge of dudes, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, um, yep. Got Eckler. And then we had a lot of other guys in that. I'm probably missing one or two. But we had a lot of guys who were high-level contributors in the NFL. Christian McCaffrey? What did you say him? Yeah, I said McCaffrey. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was him, him and Fournette were kind of the yeah. headliners, right? And so in this vein, we have... Robinson and Gibbs. But the thing is, the position has been devalued in a right. sense, right? Well, I should from, say the both from the been... NFL and from fantasy, because since 2017, we haven't gotten that restock of mm-hmm. great. Right. So I think the fantasy community as a whole is seeing a lot of rotational backs and a lot of bigger running backs who haven't quite worked right. out. Montgomery's had a good season at, in stretches. Jacob yeah. just had a good season. Sanders probably had his best season. We've been waiting yeah. for C- we've been waiting for CEH. We've been waiting for um mm-hmm. Dobbins, who's been a little banged up. We've been waiting for Akers, who's been banged up. All those guys mm-hmm. were supposed to close that gap, and we didn't quite get it. And we were hoping it was going to be this one. So, right. Know. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I shouldn't say the position has been devalued. I think the position is going a different direction than it was five years ago. I think mm-hmm. you're seeing 
running backs being used more as traditional pass catchers, traditional receivers. So let's say a guy like Jameer Gibbs, if he came out five or so years ago, he'd probably be a mid second rounder, late second rounder. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe earlier. Cause he, he has, he has a Christian McCaffrey like skill set as a receiver, not as refined as a runner. Um, but to me, it's more like Reggie Bush, right? If Reggie Bush was in today's game, he'd be a surefire first round pick every day of the week, but he was still, However, the game didn't fit his skill set yet. Widely right? sort of considered a, a bust for what he what he what right. you thought. Yeah, he, right. he, he yeah he caught eighty balls, right? He, right. he caught what well, over I think it was over seventy five balls as a rookie. Mm-hmm. But that was so uncommon then. Right. Right now, like a guy like Jameer Gibbs has a Reggie Bush like skill set. The NFL is going to want to get him the ball in space. If you look at Gibbs' splits, when he gets the ball on right or left end, he's seven six yards a carry mm-hmm. right this is a guy who fits in a wide zone wide zone spread him out scheme mm-hmm. this is going to be the miami dolphins that's night number one for him if he gets in a you know schematically he fits really well with the dolphins i think in an arthur smith offense atlanta mm-hmm. that could be a really good fit too because what they did a lot with derrick henry's when, when they got him downhill different runners entirely but really making it easier to get him on you know singular or secondary engagement so like one guy or two guys getting you in a middle of a you know middle of four or five guys that are 250 plus pounds that's not going to be where a guy like jameer gibbs wins yeah right? thing is jameer gibbs is smart very intelligent runner so if he sees that he's not a force driven mover he was with his feet now with his pads you're not gonna get a lot of yards post contact there right that's okay. The NFL knows that now. The NFL is not trending in that direction anymore. It's like when you know Pete Carmichael ran Alvin Kamara up the gut like thirty times, a game, <laughs> twenty-five times a game this year, and you're like, right. "What are you doing?" And right. This is it's incorrect it, usage. Yeah, like let's not do that. Yeah, um, ridiculous. But that that's not who Jameer Gibbs is. That's not who Alvin Kamara is. Um, but I think when you talk about a guy like Bajan Robinson, it's just we don't have to talk a lot about Bajan Robinson. The guys that the guy's the best running back prospect since Saquon Barkley. Um, similar movers, you know, similar skill sets. I think he's a little bit more fine than Barkley. Barkley was kind of this uber athlete who can do whatever he wants with his feet. Then the ACL injury actually forced him to become a little more refined. We see a lot less mistakes now with Barkley than we did pre-ACL, right? Um, and I think Bajan Robinson is going to kind of come into the NFL and run for t- – 1300 yards plus right. 10 touchdowns like off the bat set it and forget it 101 like yeah, if you yeah. need a running back it's 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 easy i think him and bryce young are the two the two you can make the case for in this class um then after that man it gets it gets really interesting with the backs i, I just don't know who's gonna get third third capital um charbonnet i like his game kind of like a joe mixon type player mm-hmm. right leave on the field for three downs feel good about it is he an elite talent no but he's someone who's going to be productive, I think, in fantasy for the next five years. Right. Sean Tucker is more of the question mark for me um, comparing him to Charbonnet, right? We're kind, of, we're kind of comparing them in essentially pairs, right? Jameer Gibbs, John Robinson, okay, we know who they are. Charbonnet and Tucker, interesting conversation, right? Tucker is the bigger play guy, right? This is the guy who's run sub six six nine five in the 60 meters. Really, really good time great back good top end speed and we talk about play speed um, pretty good pass catching numbers yeah good pass catcher adequate there at least but he doesn't offer a like multi-dimensional skill set he's not as good through contact as you'd like him to be so it depends schematically where he fits right is this going to be a guy who's going to be in a downhill scheme as kind of like what we see with cleveland and nick chubb getting him more you know ingrained in a, a scheme that has a lot more versatility and caters to his skill set let him go north south exactly the difference between a guy like nick chubb and tucker is chubb has incredible feel for gaps incredible feel for zone blocking tucker's kind of raw in that vein i don't know if he has like the, the maturity yet as a running back to to play in a multi-dimensional scheme but that's kind of what he needs to develop 
Um, needs to touch the ball a lot. Needs to touch the ball 15 plus times a game to, to kind of get in the rhythm. Uh, he's a rhythm runner kind of like Nick Chubb. Um, but I think he's an interesting one because the team has to be more of a run heavy, run heavy type team in order to, to get the most out of him. Would like to see him honestly in Carolina. Okay. Um, because I think that's a spot where we can see him get experience immediately. Um, yeah. And, and I think he's, he's an interesting back in that facet for sure. Foreman's out. Chuba's, you know, has, has yeah. had some good success, but yeah. you think those two are similar in any way? Uh, Tucker and, and Chuba? Actually, yeah. I, I think there, there's some definite, definite parallels, especially you know, their track speed. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the difference is, you know, you have the, the NFL, I would say the NFL body, the prototypical NFL body for a running back in Tucker. Yeah. Um, Chuba was extremely highly rated coming, you know, coming out of his junior year, then decided not to declare. Then we saw the stock plummet, right? Yeah. This is the guy who rushed for over 2000 yards at you know, Oklahoma state. So he had, he had a prolific season in Chuba Hubbard, um, had the big playability, you know, one cut and go scheme that didn't offer you much laterally. Um, but that's a great comparison in terms of play style. I, I think they would balance each other out pretty well. And um, I would like to see Tucker in that offense, to be honest. And, and it seemed, you know, it, it did seem like Tucker had more hype last year than this year. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. you, you see a little bit of a decline in, in pretty much all the numbers across the board for for Tucker. So maybe hurt his stock just a hair, at least in the view of the dynasty people, maybe not sure. quite the NFL. Um, so, you know, maybe not unsimilar in their uh, approach. Obviously, Tucker couldn't have came out, I don't think, last year. Um, right. So, right. Um, yeah, so it sounds like you know we are probably we're probably a, you're are probably a little less excited than maybe you you thought you might be at this point with this class. I am and I'm not because I still you know I'm working on all the AGS grades and everything, and I still have like four backs in the Pro Bowl tier or above five actually five. It's a lot. Yeah. So I mean, that that didn't happen. That didn't in happen. comparison, where where were we the last couple of years with that? All right, let's take a look. <laughs> last year, let me let me see if I can I can pull this up really fast. I have it pretty much at my fingertips. So let's see if I can do it. Um, last year we had Brees Hall, mm-hmm. and after that, it kind of took a tumble from there's no there's no like Pro Bowl caliber backs. Then after Hall, it was more guys like um, Pierre Strong Jr. Mm-hmm. You know, like guys who are good, who I'm like, okay, this this guy might be. I like honestly, I love Pierre Strong Jr. I think he could yeah. be really good in the NFL. You caught um, a little bit at the end of the season of seeing maybe right. what the potential is there. Yeah, and we had obviously Walker. I mean, Walker was my essentially my RB two, so it went from basically tier two to tier four, right? Tier one is your gold jacket guys. It doesn't happen often. Um, Bijan in there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Bijan's a gold jacket dude. Okay. Be, yeah, I mean that uh, for sure. sure. Um, Right now, it's where I have him. I think he's going to stay there. Mm-hmm. And then we had an all, one all pro caliber player in Brees Hall. And I think he's kind of lived up to that billing besides the ACL. He's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. No pro bowlers. When in this class, we have three. Right. We have three right. pro bowl caliber players in this class, in my opinion, all very different. Right. Charbonnet Tucker in the third one. Deuce why, don't, why don't you save it so people can go over your website? Yeah. <laughs> well, these aren't finalized, so I'm gonna, yeah. I'll, I'll give a little bit of the cliffhangers. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, last year we had Walker, Strong Jr., Rashad White, Isaiah Spiller, Damian Pierce, all above average, average to above average starters, right? So I think they've all kind of lived up to that. I think we're still waiting a little bit on Strong Jr. and Spiller. Mm-hmm. Spiller was supposed to be like RB two in, in last year's class. Right. And then Testing plummeted. came around, plummeted. Test, yeah, exactly, plummeted, and then you know we don't know what his role looks like with the, with the Chargers. Um, I think he could be a pretty good back, um, yeah, kind of similar to Bigsby and Evans in terms of what their NFL roles might be. Might have to fight a little bit to you know to, to get some starter level touches. Mm-hmm. Um, Rashad White's an interesting one. I, I had him in that tier as well. Um, but that's probably going to be a tier we see some of these guys, right? We, we're going to probably see some of these guys in that tier. And then the high ceiling, high risk tier, which is going to be last year, was like Keontae Ingram, mm-hmm. Ryan Robinson Jr., um, Williams in, in um, L.A., right? Um, then we have like Tyler Tyler Beatty, Tyler Beatty and um, James mm-hmm. Cook. Right. So this class, I think we have a lot more top-heavy guys, like guys that would that are going to be – 
you know, that are going to get starter level touches and Gibbs and Gibbs and Robinson and Charbonnet and Tucker. Right. Vaughn's the question mark, right? Right. Analytically, he's the, he's bar none, the most productive back in this whole entire cycle, right? He's mm-hmm. one of the most productive backs in the last 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, you go and look at what he's done on a per touch basis, per game basis, as a receiver, you know, it, incredible at five, six hundred seventy five pounds or whatever he weighs. Right. We just have but, to we have to have basically an outlier for him to be, you know, what 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 to get actually really gain a meaningful role in fantasy. Really. Exactly. Is. And I think the role we're looking for in terms of what we've seen, like in the, you know, in the past past five years, we're looking for a treat cone role. Right. We're looking for because Tariq Cohen was RB, I think, 11 in dude, fantasy. Like before three, that terrible knee injury, he was know, so dude. much fun. Yeah, I remember that because I was I'm a Bears fan. I was watching it. It was a mm-hmm. punt return against the Falcons, I think. Um, but yeah, it was a Nick. Vo- that was a Nick Foles visor game, I think. Um, <laughs> That's when Nick Foles came out with a black visor. Like, holy shit. This, he means this, business now. This is incredible. <laughs> like I just like grabbed the coffee and just like pounding my table. Like this is it. This is it. They found they found their guy. <laughs> Took the visor off and was absolute dog poo. Uh, but it's okay. Um, but no, I th- I think a, a role like Tariq Cohen, where you're getting six receptions a game, mm-hmm. you're getting five to seven carries, and they're high efficiency touches, right? Like Tariq yeah. Cohen had that stretch where it was like. Holy shit! He scored another thirty-plus yard touchdown. Like, yeah. what is going on? And he was incredible in the open field. Oh well, yeah, kind of like, kind of like Vaughn is like Vaughn's is, but Vaughn the difference between Vaughn and Cohen. I think Cohen didn't have a positional fit. He was just kind of that guy you wanted to give the ball to, but he didn't know how. You're just like, here, take it. I hope this works out. Yeah. We have a guy like Vaughn who's just so technically refined. Yeah, he profiles better as an actual running. Back. Yeah, like he's such a good sound runner mm-hmm. Cohen was just a really uber athletic right. guy at five six just impossible to tackle on a phone booth um but i think that's the role we're looking for with vaughn if he gets that role he can live up that I mean, shit three Cohen was a pro bowler right yeah uh, I, th- I think we can look into that vein of of what vaughn could be in the nfl offense but he needs the capital i, yeah. I think he I, and i think honestly if it was if I'm an NFL GM and I'm looking at product like productivity and guys who are going to help my running back room right away, he's at the top of my list for the cost right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems, it seems like we still have some, we got some question marks, obviously some testing and some draft capital will help kind of sort that out a little bit. Um, I don't like to get too ahead of myself with the capital because you can certainly, you know, make a role. And we've, we've seen plenty of sure. fourth, fourth rounders carve out a role and be, and be good, but it certainly sure. helps for the, you know, the leash, the longevity and, and the, the amount of opportunities that you're most likely going to get. So it seems like, right. you know, still fairly optimistic for what this running back could be with, with some really good guys and then some really high potential guys. And then some other guys who, if, if, if everything goes well, they could they could be right up there with maybe that third tier of of guys. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think we have you know guys like Tajay Spears. Right. We're gonna right. watch him a little bit later today in the in the Senior Bowl. But man, on film, he's he's the third best running back in this class on film. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's not yeah. really all that close. Like he has all the traits you want in today's running back. Yeah, it, it seems like him and McIntosh have been the beneficiaries of the Senior Bowl for the Absolutely. running back position. Yeah, yeah, McIntosh has raised his stuff. He could be a day two guy. And that's the thing is, are guys like Spears and McIntosh going to push down Evans and Tucker? I mean, sorry, Evans and Evans, Tucker, and Bigsby, we could right. say, right? Because a guy like Spears offers you a lot of versatility, right? We've seen that at Senior Bowl in one-on-ones against backers, uncoverable. We see how, we saw it on you know Spears' tape, but we look the thing with a guy like Spears is and we're, this is a very interesting way we look at film and evaluate it is we look at size first and then go off of what we see on film. Uh uh-uh. uh, film first, then size. Yeah. Size right. doesn't really matter as much unless the NFL tells us it matters, right? If the NFL drafts Jameer Gibbs in the top 35, 40 picks, doesn't matter to them. They don't give right. a shit, yeah. right? Spears too. Spears has showed out at the Senior Bowl less than two hundred five pounds. He's been the best running back there. 
Yeah, and it was almost like a a big victory when he came in at 204, you know? Yeah, because he's listed at 195. But one thing, you know, I think the public doesn't understand as much as guys never play at their listed weights Mm -hmm. ever, right? We're talking about performance weights. Performance weights usually vary from like five to 10 to 12 pounds, even. So a guy like Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey ain't playing at 210. Mm-hmm. Like, come on now. Like he he's playing yeah. close to 200 pounds or maybe even under that. Cause you have to understand, you know, repeat force over and over again for four quarters in terms of you producing that force. The more force you produce, the more strain it puts on your your, you know, your muscles, tendons, joints, etc. Mm-hmm. If I weigh less, I produce less force from a mass standpoint. It's less on my joints, less mm-hmm. on my tendons, ligaments, and muscles, right? So NFL running backs, NFL players in general are weighing less to increase longevity, right? We're seeing that a lot now. The NFL combine weigh-ins have turned into fight (laughs) weigh-ins. These are are literally guys who are trying to, because front offices don't understand. These are, these are by all accounts, older dudes who just want to, you know, check a box, Mm -hmm. right? Check a box, check check a historic box, right? We're still living a little bit in the early 2000s where we want our running backs to be 215 pounds plus, right? right? The closer we get to that number, the more scouts and evaluators like, okay, this is this is good. But they're you no know, agents and, and guys who they're training with kind of understand that. So it's like, all right, we want to make sure they that box is as checked as we can get it. Right. So it would seem like you could, if you're a guy like Spears, you come in there with maybe trying to be a little more water weighty and gain yourself a little weight. And then, you know, like you can kind of, or if you need to perform better, like maybe you're coming in there a little underweight, trying to, trying to yeah. maybe get a higher time with, to prove the athleticism. I, I yeah, feel like you exactly. can maybe skew that a little bit. Um, yeah, for sure. And because, you know, what Spears not doing right now, he's not running the 40 right now. <laughs> right. Right. He, he the, the, his senior bowl has really elevated his stock. And to my opinion, he's a deep, probably a day two running back right now. So that's the interesting thing is Evans, Tucker, Bigsby. Are those guys going to be day two picks because the NFL seems to be trending towards kind of like Tajay Spears. We like that. We like Tajay Spears' skill set, really diverse. Kenny McIntosh can help us out a lot on third downs, right? right. This is a guy he's probably not going to profile as a you know 15 plus touch per game, you know, guy, but he's gonna be someone who's gonna help a team on third downs, right? He's gonna he's gonna be kind of like the Giovanni Bernard of an offense where he's just super annoying for fantasy. Cause you're like, Holy shit, this guy's on the field again. Yeah. He's going to keep the quarterback up. Right. And he's going to provide a reliable outlet and pass catching option. So that's, I think what we're looking at in terms of role for a guy like McIntosh. And he has the size that yeah. NFL, NFL evaluators love. Like I, I think that's what yeah, kind of, you know, you get, you get that, you kind of get the the upside of maybe the littler guy like a Spears. He obviously doesn't move like Spears, but he has like like pass catching ability kind of upside. But then you you kind of can get smitten with McIntosh has the the bigger frame that you know. Hey, maybe we can get kind of double duty out of this guy. Right. Maybe he can kind of turn into a three down back for us. Uh, but we know we can get the third down usage out of him, and it's going to be good. Right? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a that's a big one, and it's going to be funny because you know right now guys like. Tucker, Bigsby, Evans, all those guys are in the top, I would say, you know, 15, 14 picks in terms of, you know, ADP, like in, in your rookie drafts. Mm-hmm. I wonder how it's going to look once we, once we get NFL draft results, right? right? When these guys, when these guys are picked, where they're picked to, right? right? Are guys like Spears, if he's picked, let's say Spears is the fourth running back off the board. Let's say it's Robinson, Gibbs, Charbonnet and Spears. Well, shit, do we put him over Evans and Ducker and all those guys? Mm-hmm. We, we might have to, right? The, like, right. the NFL the NFL tells us this is a multi-billion dollar business. Mm-hmm. These guys don't want to fuck up. Right. right? These guys don't <laughs> right. want to make mistakes. And they do. Because but, they do all the time. But the, right. like, like the more data they, this is, we're in 2023. The more data they can gather, it helps them make decisions, right? They are multi-billion dollars in this thing right they're making the best decision possible for their organization and if that tells me anything it tells me they're going to make the most efficient one possible are they gonna make mistakes yes but they're telling me that this player is in this range that other nfl teams likely view like not not just one out of 32 teams like two two atwell 
I have no idea why the hell he was a second rounder. Right. But the NFL told us they liked his skill set enough. Right. Okay, great. Little different because I don't, I don't think many other NFL teams would be like, okay, this is a guy we want in that, right. in that round. And in that regard, it only takes one, you know? Yeah, it does, right? So a, a guy like, you know, Spears, where everybody's kind of like, oh, this guy's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. You can kind of hear that noise already and it makes that decision for us as, you know, people who play fantasy and people who evaluate players Mm -hmm. makes our decisions easier because we've already in the draft we we thought oh this is a guy that could be drafted in the second or third round as a guy like Tutu Atwell we were surprised he wasn't a fifth rounder right so that's the difference I think for me is the masses can kind of feel that heat coming with some of these prospects like McIntosh and like Spears and if if that's correct then I think we know where the NFL is trending with these guys yeah